All right, here we are with the Lake Murray tools and tips and secrets from the Elite Series. Just finished up here at Lake Murray. Unfortunately, I did not make the day three cut. I had a decent day one, 17, 10 on day one. Day two, I only could catch 12, 14, right at 13 pounds. So very disappointing, ended up in 69th place. Uh, not where I wanted to be, but I'm gonna show you exactly what I caught my fish on and kind of take you through every single setup. Uh, so it, here on Lake Murray, there's a couple different things going on. A number of fish were on beds, a number of fish, a, a ton of fish actually, were out on points doing the heron thing. Those fish, unless they were, unless they were schooling, were extremely tough to catch. And, and that's kind of where I ended up. I, I caught a few uh, doing both things. I was never able to really get on any of those places where those fish were schooling heavy. Um, when that's happening, it is not that hard to catch them. I never actually just, I've fished a zillion points in, in the last two days, never got on any of those kind of places. That's why I'm talking to you after day two, not after day three or four. But let me show you some of the, the ways that I caught my fish. Probably the number one thing that I caught the most fish on was a really combination of two things. Uh, the wacky worm and the shaky head. Um, the, I caught my very first keeper uh, of the tournament, a four plus pounder, four and a half pounder on the missile baits magic worm. This is a blueback secret color on a one eighth ounce water, uh, warlock jig head. Had that on a uh, eight pound leader. I was using the, let's see where it is, the eight pound. Sunline Mar Marabishu. Is that right? Marub Marub Maboroshi. Why do I get I get tongue tied on that every time that I try to say it on camera? Which is fun for you guys. Not as much fun for me. The eight pound test does does the trick there. Had that on a thirteen pound D braid uh Daiwa ballistic mq the new spinning reel that is very very nice and then this is kind of a, a sample is the icon ned rig rod it, it is very similar to um you know just the medium fast regular spinning rod but it's a little different bend my buddy jj helped uh helped tweak that for for cashing really really like that uh it's got it's got some good power but it's a very moderate power it's it's kind of an odd uh, dynamic, but I really like that rod. That's cool. That's probably caught how I caught about half of my fish. The other half came on, uh, you know, fishing around areas where the fish were hanging around, uh, visually sight fishing some, but the normal magic worm I was throwing, uh, this is watermelon violet when it was sunny. Uh, when it was not, I'd either throw John's Juice or Passion Shad. Those are kind of the two colors there, uh, but had the Gamakatsu, uh, it's a the TGW tournament grade wire, the TGW one number one hook, the octopus hook. I uh, had that on 18 pound X plasma braid. I, I've just played around with the 12 in the, the 16 and I went up to 18 and I really like it. Uh, I don't, I don't feel like it restricts the casting distance. And then, you know, if you're fishing around docks or cover or something, um, you can really, you can really reach down and grab your reel if you need to, and kind of steer those fish away from cover. I really, really like that. Had that on the seven three Cashin Icon spinning rod, a medium action, fast taper, the same Daiwa ballistic reel. Um, like probably caught over half of my fish on those two baits right there. I did catch a couple key fish on. A drop shot with the, the same eight pound leader, uh, that same hook that I just mentioned, that TGW octopus. And I had the mini magic worm, the new mini magic worm from Missile Baits made by Robo. I uh, had that on there. I had to pull that bad boy out. Uh, I caught a couple on that color and then I caught a key three and a half pounder on the Passion Shad. Something about that color. I flipped it in there on that bed fish, nailed it. I uh, had a 316 ounce uh, rattle shot weight 
on there. And then the, uh, the John Cruz Cashin Icon uh, drop shot rod. Uh, that was the deal uh, on, on that setup. Uh, and then out there on those points, I threw the heck out of top water. I threw a lot of uh, flukes. I did catch a couple keepers and then one, one three pounder. Now weighed the first day on the Zoom fluke. That is the uh, Disco Green. Five aught Gamakatsu offset shank round bend worm hook. 14 pound sunline shooter. Spro power swivel about 14 inches up the line. Had that on a seven foot uh, heavy action worm jig rod from Cash and the Icon. Uh, and then that Daiwa Zillion SVTW. Man, you can absolutely zip uh, a bait a, a mile with that reel. These, these reels are phenomenal casting distance wise, um, holding up extremely well so far. Uh, and then I did catch probably four or five fish the first day. Uh, one of my keepers the second day on the Carolina rig had a long leader. I'll show you that. Had a longer leader. So my leader was yay long, I don't know, three and a half feet, something like that. I uh, had 14 pound Sunline Shooter leader material. I put a little baby destroyer on there, but I pulled off the pinchers because I wanted something a little more finesse. And that seemed to do the trick. I caught some in practice on that. And that seemed to, to be the trick Is watermelon red was the color and had a three aught offset round bin worm hook and a half ounce uh, half ounce tungsten weight on there with that spro power swivel i'll give you an up close shot of that there's the half ounce weight because i was throwing it you know in one to five feet of water i wasn't fishing this thing very deep i didn't want to stay hung up had the little the little clacker and the little bead and then the spro power swivel had 20 pound sunline shooter main line Still got tremendous casting distance. Uh, the Cashin uh, Icon Worm Jig Rod 7.3, medium heavy. That is my bread and butter for a Carolina rig. I've caught a zillion fish on that action. Absolutely love it. Love, love, love it. And then again, Daiwa Zillion SVTW. I almost, I want to say Tatula because I've fished Tatulas for so, so long. Um, that the SVTW on that zillion is a little uh not i'm not accustomed to it but the the shape of the reel is very very similar to the tattoos it just casts a lot better it's just a lot smoother and the the little precision um adjustments on the reel you can really really dial that thing in so those were you know the, that essentially was the equipment that was the deal there was definitely a top water bite going on uh, i'll tell you the the little secret part here now on the the schooling fish um, from what i've gathered from the people i talked to and from my experience um, if it was calm if it was slick out they would want to uh, eat the top water or the fluke probably the best when they were not on top water uh, or the fluke you would and those fish would school uh, sometimes a jerk bait it looked like it was a uh, was good good option and then sometimes you had to finesse them uh, shaky heads were what some guys used and um, you know bigger shaky heads smaller shaky heads drop shots uh, you kind of had to mix that stuff up but i heard one of the best lines uh in the way in the weigh-in line uh somebody said if i think it was matt Heron, he said when those fish up there on those points are not schooling they're like zombies floating around and you can literally get up on those points and see them. And those fish are just kind of zombies. They're just kind of, you know, wandering around and wandering around. And by, by gosh, they, they won't hardly bite anything. I mean, you can throw at a thousand of them, you might catch one. It's really, it's really kind of amazing. But that, that, that's one, one big deal. The other deal is that I underestimated how many fish were gonna be on beds during this tournament. Um, I did some looking in practice. I found some. I just didn't think that it was going to be enough to do really well, and I was wrong. I was just flat out wrong there. Uh, I felt like if I, if I would have committed more to the bedfish deal, I absolutely could have um, 
could have done better in this tournament. Uh, also, probably could have committed better to just doing the the you know heron spawn deal. Just commit to that 100. percent Probably could have done better in this tournament. But I kind of mixed it up. I even went up the river for a couple hours in practice, and just didn't get the right feeling up there. So. Um, you, you live and learn. This one definitely hurts. Very frustrating for me. So I'm um, looking forward to fishing you know, right again next week. I, I'm, I'm getting ready to do my tackle. Got all my rods out and I'm going to just go ahead and get everything geared up for Santee Cooper. Hopefully we can have a lot better event there. I uh, can't be messing around and missing these day three cuts. It's not, uh, it's not cool. Didn't like it uh, last year and I absolutely do not like it this year. So I appreciate everybody watching. If you have any questions or comments, uh, drop them down there in the uh, the comment section, and I'll do my best to uh, get a get a uh, look and answer those if I can. Uh, so, but again, thanks everybody for watching.